My name is Jimmy. What's up, you guys? Jimmy here, back at you with another new review for Ultimate Spider-Man Web Warriors. And this is episode four, and the episode is titled Cloak and Dagger. Now, before I get to the review, I want to let you know I will be talking about the episode. So if you have not watched it yet, I suggest you go do so first. And then come back to the review and express your feelings on it. But um, in this episode, uh, Director Fury sends Spider-Man and Iron Fist to um, go track and bring in Cloak and ask Cloak and Dagger to join the team. But uh, they're only interested in Dagger because Cloak has some problems in, his re in the reports on him. But um, they eventually come across Cloak, and uh, he actually brings in mindless ones. And um, he eventually takes uh, Iron Fist, and while Spider-Man's trying to fight Cloak, Dagger comes in. And, you know, they fight, Cloak gets away, and then Dagger tells Spider-Man, you know, that Cloak has not been acting like himself here lately. So uh, they decide to go to the number one person to go to for anything magical related. To the Sanctum Sanctorum, home of the Sorcerer Supreme, Dr. Stephen Strange. But when they get there, Cloak is also there, and uh, he's, you know, also battling the Mindless Ones. You know, and uh, Dr. Strange eventually gets captured himself. And uh, by before he gets captured, he gives Spider-Man the the eye of Agamotto. You know, and uh, we find out that we later find out that Dornamu is the reason why not uh, why uh, Cloak is not himself because he's using Cloak to steep to kidnap these magical related heroes. Why he took Doctor Strange, White Tiger. Iron Fist, all mystical based heroes. You know, but um, they were able to snap Cloak out of it and they were able to snap the other ones that had been captured by Dornamu, which uh, if you're not familiar with Dornamu, he is pretty much the main villain for Doctor Strange. But uh, they were able to uh, defeat him and get away. But uh, he he comes back with them, but Doctor Strange was able to send him back and seal him back in the Dark Force dimension. And then um, Spider-Man asks Cloak and Dagger to both ask them to join their team on Shield, you know, and um, gives them a card so that when they're ready, they can contact Shield. On their answer, you know, and after everything that happened, Spider-Man, you know, even though Fury said no on Cloak, he still in invited Cloak as well, which I kind of understand. He he's a very cool character, I have to say. You know, it's just like what well, Iron Fist. You can't have light without dark. You can't have yin without yang. You know, but you know, it's it's like they're. It's, it's almost seems like they're twins. You know, they're kind of inseparable. You can't have one without the other. But in the final scene of the episode, we see, uh, which shouldn't be a surprise, we see Taskmaster. He had gotten to them before Spider-Man did, uh, which, uh, you know, earlier Cloak did say, he said not, he said not to trust anyone. So, uh, pretty much, Taskmaster convinced them that S.H.I.E.L.D. are just going to use them as weapons, which actually, he's got that backwards. He's going to use them as weapons. Just like he was going to use the Venom symbiote as a weapon for his recruits. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, pretty much the entire episode. I, I really like it. It was cool to see these two characters. I mean, I've heard them multiple times in the past, multiple times, but the last time I actually saw, literally saw them in anything 
was probably back in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. That was probably the last time I actually saw them. And I think that was when I was first learning about them, if I'm correct. But, um, yeah, they, Marvel in the past had plans to make a live action show for Cloak and Dagger. It probably could have potentially been a really cool TV show. But, you know, they had so many shows planned. I mean, they were going to bring Hulk back to TV. I mean, nothing against Hulk. Hulk's had his ch time on television. Someone else that hasn't had that hasn't had that chance. Which me, the one live action show, I would love to see. It's someone who I think it would perfectly work as a live action TV series. The Punisher. You get the actor that everyone loves as live action Punisher. You write it good. And you got gold. But, um, yeah. I really like this episode. Looking forward to future episodes. Especially, with, which uh, I'm probably speaking for everyone. The Ultimate Comic Spider-Man. Miles Morales. Everyone's looking forward to that. If, if you're not looking forward to seeing Miles Morales, then, then you're not cool. You're not one of the cool people. But uh, me personally, right next to Miles Morales, the other Spider-Man I'm looking forward to seeing is Spider-Man Noir. Because, yeah, I've always had the fascination with Noir timeline. But uh, that's pretty much it on my review. Uh, let me know down in the comments below your thoughts and opinions on the episode. And also, since this was magical a mystical based episode. I want to ask you who is your mystical based Marvel character? Mine personally would have to be Doctor Strange. And I'll, and I will accept it no matter if it's um, no matter if it's a hero or a villain. I'll accept any answer as long as they're a Marvel mystical character. But uh, that's pretty much it for my review. Also, be on the lookout, not this coming week, but the following week, be on the lookout for reviews for both Gotham and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., since uh, Gotham's going to be doing its series premiere, and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is coming back. If you have not watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. beyond the first half of Season 1, I can tell you, the second half way more interesting, way better. So, so you could also start watching season two, because uh, I say that show had a rough start, but that second half really made up for it. But my name's Jimmy, and until next time, bye.